Welcome back to the Physique Factory podcast and today we have special guest Christian Chapman. So Christian, start off just by telling us a little bit about yourself. Um, Christian Chapman, that was that's the first thing, that's my name, that, that's good. Um, coached by Christian on Instagram, uh, been coaching now online for like seven and a half years, um, left my full-time job three and a half years ago to kind of pursue it. Full time is my only thing, um, and it, yeah, it's just been getting bigger every year since. Essentially, I'm pretty boring, so that's that's me, bro. Done. Too fair. Sick. Um, what was you doing before getting into coaching? Um, so, from when I left school, I went into hospitality. So I used to run bars, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels, stuff like that for like seven or eight years, and then I sold cars. Sick. For three years for uh, Sitna, BMW and Mini. Wicked. Yeah, well, you say wicked. Fucking hell, man. Some uh, some depressing times, mate, trust me. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of pressure, isn't it? When, especially with car sales. It wasn't so much like, to be fair, the sales pressure wasn't like that like enforced there. It didn't feel like you're, on, you're in boot camp or whatever. But I think the area that we were working in like, didn't help. Um just like the kind of customers you get and stuff like that. But you learn, especially in hospitality, people skills, which I think then translates into coaching because if you're serving a thousand different people a week, you meet a thousand different fucking personalities. And if your job's to get on with everyone, you normally get you, you normally get good at getting on with everyone. Yeah, I was literally going to say that. Was that how that's transferred over from like working hospitality, working car sales to what you're doing now and you're absolutely smashing it now with it. So... Definitely... Yeah, you, you gotta be. You gotta be. I think anyway. In this, you've gotta be a people person. Like that's it. Because I say this for everyone. Like you know, we all do the fucking exact same thing. Like I'm telling everyone's telling each like the person what to eat, how to train, supplements. Like everyone does the same fucking job. So what's actually going to differentiate you from everyone else? And the only thing is you, literally. This is personality, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. 100%. And my school teachers always said, don't worry about your grades, we'll just get by on your personality. So I was like, yes, yeah, sweet. We were just talking about that before, James, weren't we? Like, before we came on, we are talking about kind of clients we kind of attract and how, like, you know, there's kind of, it's, it's just slightly different compared to who he attracts compared to who I attract. And funny enough, I attract people like myself in similar situations. And you guys are probably the same. And that, you know, that puts you in a good position to help those people because you're kind of living it. You're living proof of it, aren't you? Yeah, I think it's definitely like that at the start. I think your what's that saying? Your vibe attracts your tribe. But I think as you get busier and more well known, you get people that are just not like you whatsoever. But they just come in because of you coach this person or you got this result or whatever. You coach their mate or whatever. Because I have some people like it's just like they're checking, that's it, we don't speak. Whereas I have some people that I, we speak every day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, you're still going to get the same result. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And as you grow, I suppose you'll you'll see more and more of that, like you say. So, how how do you find that then? If you're if like you know maybe when you started, you did have a lot more people like you, and now there's a bit like more diversity. Do you find that harder to coach? Do you find it just as easy, sort of thing? Uh, I prefer it because well, I prefer it now, um, because I think look, if someone's too similar to you, it's like a it's like a relationship in it. Like, if you're too similar, that's not normally the best thing. Um, and I think if someone's really similar to me, I know how to coach them from, from the get-go. So it's easy. I don't like easy things. I like when a client comes to me and is like, they've got this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. So I'm like, right, how can I solve all those things? Because if I do solve all those things, that's quite a lot more rewarding than just being like, hey, bro, I've done every single thing this week. Sweet. But yeah. That's quite boring. As much as it's good for results and stuff like that, that's that's cool. But I need to be I need to be stimulated. That's like my personality. I need something to do all the time. Of course, it's mostly you like your job as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is it mostly bodybuilders you work with, Christian? I work with fucking everyone you can think of, mate. Um, it is it is predominantly like bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, but I'd say at the moment, fifty percent of my clients, not that these people aren't bodybuilders, are female. We're a lot of females now. 
Um, I think with females, I think once you get a couple of good ones, they all tend to follow a suit. I think girls speak to each other a lot more about their coaching rather than what blokes talk about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think they're quite like, you know, well, this person's with him, so I'll go over there. Um, but yeah, still still coach Gen Pop. I, I still enjoy that. Um, I'm, I'm very much personal. If I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to do it. So um, bodybuilders, pros, Gen Pop, photo shoots, whatever. I'm, I, I like to do it all. So. That's cool. What um, what's the hardest sort of client that you've had to work with? You don't need to name them, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'll fucking name them. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about it at the weekend. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not even gonna like dig someone out, but it's just like you know when you feel like someone doesn't like trust you to do your job. Yeah, and they keep making decisions themselves. Yeah. There is that. And it's just like, I always say the same thing to them. At the end of the day, I work in a results-driven industry. If I don't get results, I'm not getting clients. I want to do what is best for you. And funny enough, you're paying me. So I technically know more than you. That's why you're here. So I suggest you fucking listen, to be honest. And what I find hardest is putting so much into someone and they just take the piss. Yeah, I find it really disrespectful, and I don't like being disrespected. Like I hate that. Um, like you do everything for someone, it's like, oh, bro, fucked up. And I, this is normally prep clients. You know, if I've got lifestyle people and they're coming off plan, that's that's cool. That's the whole idea. Yeah. A lot of the times, like I want you to get away from the plan. Sometimes, whereas prep client, okay, from X point out, it's a hundred percent every day. Like there isn't days where it's like I had this on top. That's that's not a thing, mate. Unfortunately, like and the, actually, I tell you the one thing that pisses me off the most: the people that have the best genetics normally have the worst work ethic. Yeah, and it's so annoying because I'm just like, man, if I had your genetics, bro, fuck me, I'd be flying. But I look like a bag of dicks, so you know, and I try really fucking hard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it, that pisses me off because I just think you you're ungrateful for your own genetics. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's a difficult one when people, the head's not in it if they're having off plans and not sticking to plan on prep, but there's like, it depends how much they want it as well. That's definitely, bodybuilding is definitely not for them if they can't stick to a diet. No, it's not for everyone and like, that's okay. I think people feel like they have to do it because so-and-so's done it or it's what's cool at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you can, that thing, isn't it? Something yeah. Weird. You can normally spot them a fucking mile off. But at the same time, I try not to be prejudiced because I give a good example. Last year, I had that uh, Joel Davis, who's like Jim Shark, fucking my protein after like million followers on TikTok and shit like that. And I thought, I don't know how this is. This prep's going to go. Okay, ain't going to be good. And he nailed every single fucking day, and he looked unreal. Sick. And I, I said it to him at the end. I said I thought this was going to be an absolute shit show. To be fair, so fair play. That's mint. Yeah, that's sick. That's what. Uh, what did he do? Bodybuilding. Yeah, natural. Sick. Yeah, really, really, just great structure, physique, work ethic. Just, just a good kid. Really nice guy. That's mint. That's. Cool. I think um, like like we're kind of touching on there. A lot of people they'll, they'll see it on Instagram and it'll look kind of like exciting and fun and shit like that. But then these people that are are saying, "Oh, I, I fucked up this weekend. I had that on top of my meal plan." It's like, well, you clearly don't understand what a prep involves if that's what you're doing like either that or as you say james they just don't want it enough it's not it's not right for them but you've got got to know what you're getting into with that shit i, I do i do think some people just go into it completely blind and you know from the first check-in like i had a couple of guys inquire recently again kind of like social media people and um they've both got absolutely god tier genetics yeah, we both want to prep for this show. Yeah, okay, cool. Semi semi mandatories in the morning. What are mandatories? I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, you should know these these things before you compete. You should. I'm not going to say, right, lads, fuck off, because that ain't it. You can learn these things, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But the groundwork should be done before it even starts, in my opinion. You should have been to bodybuilding shows, and you should know what mandatories are. You should fucking know how to hit certain posts and stuff like that so but you know it comes in time doesn't it 
How um like for you guys like when you got into bodybuilding were you surrounded by other bodybuilders at the time or was it something you very much kind of reached out to and figured out yourself? Um, I was definitely surrounded by it. Um, when I got into it, like, I hate when people say, but yeah, when I got into it properly, which is when I stopped fucking around and not having a clue, I approached the guy that was the biggest guy in the gym and asked for help. Yeah, yeah. And then then surround, and then after that, it was like you know, my, in my relationships, they would be into bodybuilding and stuff like that. So you're then surrounded by it. Um, yeah, it just becomes like a, you, you get in a circle then, don't you? What, what about you, Jibs? I got into it. I just wanted to go. I love the gym. And I used to play a shitload of golf and they gave that. From golf to bodybuilding. Yeah, it's a weird one. Um, and then I thought, right, I need a goal. I need to do something. And it definitely wasn't fucking CrossFit. So I didn't want to do that. Um, and then, I was just looking at it for the thought the biggest guy in the gym thought he looks pretty cool. I wouldn't mind like being like that. And then started taking shitloads of gear and lifting weights. <laughs> so you again you're surrounded by it though, weren't you? Like you can't oh, yeah. see it happening. I was the same. Like I was in a gym where there there's a lot of bodybuilders. There were people that would like literally just be posing in the middle of the gym. So you very quickly knew what all these things are. But like I, I then as well, because I took such an interest in it, I went and researched it and you're looking up online, you're watching videos of people doing their mandatory poses. That's what kind of made me think of all this. But then I wonder if you're just in a gym that's not really a bodybuilding gym, if you're in a a normal pure gym, for example, or something like that, I wonder how like you know blind to it you are really and then you just see it on instagram you're like, oh yeah i'd like to do that but then you, you've not got a clue really i suppose so it's, i suppose what i'm saying is i can't understand how people can be like that i suppose yeah environment i was having, having this discussion with the client today because he's just like switched to a different gym from a pure gym and it's a, a bodybuilding gym and he's like my sessions are so much better i'm way more motivated i'm like yeah because you're surrounded by people doing the same thing with the same goal and stuff whereas you know I'm not like slagging off different gyms and stuff like that, but like you're going to go in and there's kids in there and there's old people. Not that there's anything wrong with that or whatever, but fucking old people. Yeah, <laughs> fucking old people. Get in the fucking way. Um, but your environment is everything. And yeah. I started training when I started training. I was in bodybuilding gyms. I've never trained in my life in a pure gym or anything like that because I know I'm not going to enjoy it. Yeah. It's simple. I might sound snobbery. But whatever. That's something I'm thinking with my gym as well. Like obviously we've we've only been open just over a month. It's a small gym in a small town. As I say to you, it's kind of like Gareth's in a sense. It's it's a bit bigger than that, but um, you know, it's trying to create that environment. I'm not even necessarily trying to make it a bodybuilding gym by any means, but it's just like creating an environment where people are doing shit like like lifting heavy, for example, and other people are seeing that and they're like, Well, you know, if he can if he can deadlift five plates, then so can I. And then it builds that environment of like you know, I suppose like that growth environment. That's what that's what you're looking for. People to drive each other on. So it's I don't know how easy that'll be to build, but that's something that personally I'm I'm definitely trying to build to to create that sort of environment. Depends on a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of that I think just comes down to who owns the gym. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be fun. <laughs> we'll see no more about that. Don't, don't be a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, that as well. That that does help if you're not that. So. Mo- moving on to the next subject. <laughs> Christian hates old people. First thing that's controversial. <laughs> yeah. Fuck's sake. This is a favour. Don't post this until April. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll I'll keep this bit out for now. <laughs> anyway, where were we? <laughs> but no, you're you're absolutely right as well. I suppose a lot of that's uh, a lot of that's on me as well. It's like to 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 create that environment, but um, hopefully get some big bastards in that are outlifting me soon as well. Get get the right people to your gym, man. Yeah, That's absolutely. It. It's always going to be a struggle in a small town, I suppose. But I mean, again, it's certainly possible, isn't it? Mate, body, <laughs> bodybuilders travel for the right fucking gym. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've done it myself. To be fair, like 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 I said to you, obviously, I've, I've been down to Gareth. So it's about a forty minute drive for me, but. Just even, uh, I wouldn't say even that was a bodybuilding thing, it was a kit enthusiast thing. I'm like, look at all this knowledge yes. stuff. I need to get down there. Um, but yeah, great little setup down there. And there's quite a few in Scotland I've travelled to just to, to try out. Um, JP's gym and where's that, Cope Bridge, like they've got some really nice kit because there's not a lot of like Atlantis stuff or anything like that in uh, Scotland, but he's got the the pendulum and the hack down there and um, he's got a lot of nice bits down there. That's the guy, James, that's got the two... Cybex Bravos, who's got the two to one pulley and the four to one pulley, and that's when you oh, know you're an enthusiast when you've got both of them. 
they're expensive. Yes, it is. Gets, gets addictive, though. I, I learned that in lockdown because I just kept buying fucking kit from my parents' garage at the time. <laughs> you know, full set. Yeah. Are you at a King's Gym all the time then, Christian? Is that your main gym that you train at? No, so um, I've been a member there for the last four weeks um, for obvious reasons, um, because Georgia lives down this way. Um, I'm based in Birmingham, so I normally train at Ultimate Fitness. All right, okay, yeah. He's Cy Fan's gym. Sick gym, good environment. If you ever want a session with Cy Fan, I highly don't recommend it. Because fuck me, that guy is on another planet. There when you go, though. Legs. Legs. Mate, we did legs, and like, I like to think I train pretty hard, but you know, when you do something completely different to what you used to do, mate, we were third exercising, and I was trying to think of excuses for how the fuck do I get out of it now? <laughs> because I knew we had about seven exercises fucking left. Fucking hell. Yeah. I, the, the first time I saw him train legs when I was in there, about a year and a half ago now. And he was barbell squatting like five plates a side for, for reps. Yeah. And I was like, fucking hell, I said, is this like first exercise, second exercise? It was like, now nah, 10th. And I was like, 10th? And you're doing that for reps? And he was like, yeah, I just get stronger throughout the session. I was like, right, yeah. I just get weak. <laughs> and like, I mean, he trains, bro, with literally zero care for his body. Like, just trains balls to the wall, and he's never been injured in his life. That's crazy. Yeah. That. It's mad how people can just fuck it. Well, it's like people who smoke about fucking like 20 a day and then they live to about 100 and fucking 10 or whatever. Same, yeah, yeah. same that principle with that, where they can just do whatever they fucking want and they've got no tendonitis. They don't fucking pull the disc with the back or anything like that. It's crazy. Like, you know, when me and you train games, it will be like, you know, we'll do eight reps warming up go up the stack a bit, we'll do five, we'll do three, we'll do two, we'll go into working. Yeah. His, his warm-up sets are like 10, 10 reps every time until you get into the stack and then it's like, right, now we're working. I'm like, right, well, my legs are already fucked, bro. So I don't know what you expect me to do here, mate. Like, because his, his warm-ups are like sets. Fucking hell. And it's like, there is, it's also like cardio, like rest times are, right, as soon as your man's done on the sheet, you're straight back on. Fucking hell. And I can't keep up with that because I'm a fat bastard. There's something good about that, though, eh? Like, going back to what we were talking about with, like, creating an environment in the gym. Like, I remember this guy that used to come into the, the gym that I was training at, that bodybuilding gym, and, like, he would train arms to warm up for training legs. Like, just those people that are, like, just that unhinged that, like... They, they just don't give a fuck. They just train fucking hard and that's it. And, like, I don't think, I don't think enough people train hard nowadays. Like, I think it's... If it hurts, it, if it, hurts it works. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something we've maybe lost a little bit. And, like, me and James, I suppose, have kind of been down that rabbit hole of, like, you know, the biomechanics side of things. And, like, that is very useful. But sometimes you get too far one way and you're like, oh, everything has to be perfect and everything has to be, you know, done to a T. But it's like, actually, you know, you need that basics of... Just fucking lift. Just fucking lift. Yeah. Just fucking hard first. And, uh, you and need I, the combination of both. I've been in every kind of phase of that. And I think now I'm just like, I'm I'm like middle ground. Like, yeah, I want like an optimal kind of setup. But I also just want to fucking lift the weight and, and get yeah. going. Like, I don't want to get my fucking ruler out and start measuring stuff. And I, that's not me. And sometimes if I'm feeling absolutely battered, I'm probably going to leave a couple of reps in the tank and, and not train like a fucking mentalist. But then when I feel good and everything's sweet, I'm like, right, I'm going to fuck myself up. Do you know what I mean? So I think, I think it's, and I think it's good to have that middle ground. That, that's what keeps me happy. I don't, I don't want to go in the gym and overthink. I just want to train. That's what I got into it for. Like, and I think that's what people are missing these days. Like, remember why you started training, like you enjoy it. And it's meant to be enjoyable. And I think a lot of people just suck the fun out of it now. It's just too yeah. much. It's just, um, it's like taking about fucking 15 minutes to set up an exercise. That is fucking overkill. Yeah. 100%. You know, when when Nick starts getting his bands out to do the trampoline Cybex hack, I'm thinking, come on, bro, man. <laughs> See, fair. Yeah. If, if I loaded it up properly and did a proper, rather than doing those partials like we did, if I loaded it up properly, my knees would be fucking bit seven in reverse bandit. Yeah, same. See, when you train with those two, though, like you do just hear excuses all day, though, don't you? Like, just fucking. <laughs> just no, to, be fair, out, to be fair, when when I first trained with um, Jay and Nick, like 
I think I was pretty battered that day. I was thinking, they're going to fucking kill me now. And as soon as I walked in, you were coming out with excuses, and Nick was coming out with excuses. I was like, all right, I'll fit right in then. Yeah, I'm going to fit right in with these fucking idiots. <laughs> Drags the tone down, eh? James just, oh, my knees, my knees. I can't do that because of my oh, knees. My, my knees are fine. It was my back. It was Nick's knees that session. So it was my back, his knees. He... Nick is quite old, to be fair. Like, at his age, like, he's got to take it easy. Yeah, granddad. <laughs> that's how he gets that grainy condition it's just old man condition yeah. <laughs> that's what it's called <laughs> old man muscle <laughs> I'm working uh, on that myself I think the stress is doing it to me I'll have some great condition next time I diet down <laughs> just pure stress <laughs> you, were, you said something the other day when we trained it's weird how you can have the same strength as someone when you're training with them in that it, session. it's so weird we li- we've never trained together ever and I don't think we adjusted the weight on any exercise we were literally just doing exactly the same pretty much for the same reps and it's like Absolutely. we've never trained together I, I think that's fucking weird but i don't know i i do think i train different when i'm training with someone i'm like i want to fuck this guy up and i want to fuck myself up as well in the process whereas sometimes when i'm on my own especially with like work stress and if i'm thinking about work and stuff like that it's not always i'm not always giving it 110 yeah, all. sometimes you want to work. get in, get out because you've got something in the back of your mind thinking, fuck, I need to set this client up or I need to get back to them or do something like that. And it's a rush session or half the time you're on like, between sets, you're on the phone. And, yeah. and the, mate, at the end of the day, that, that, that's okay. And I, I don't like anyone that tells me otherwise that that's not all right. Like I get, yeah, man, switch off in the gym and stuff like that. Okay, well, sometimes, you know, real life actually gets in the way. Exactly. I mean, and you can't just be bodybuild, 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 bodybuild 24 fucking seven because that's also exhausting. Yeah. Some days it's just about ticking the box, isn't it? It's just getting it done. Like your idea probably of a shit session is probably not actually a shit session, if you know what I mean. It's just like compared to what you have done when you're you're yeah. having those great sessions when you're when you're training with that guy down at um, Ultimate Fitness in Birmingham, it's like, you know, you're comparing it to that. Like it's shit compared to that, but it's not actually shit, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's it's most people's good sessions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I find it quite hard as well now, just being in my own gym, and it's like there's so many things that are need done, and you're looking. I'm I'm doing a set, and then I'm going over and I'm fucking cleaning the windows. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, just finish training, then clean the windows for fuck's sake. But like, so many distractions, so many things, as you say, so much on your mind. But I have um, I've, I've been kind of working on that. You're trying to find the best place, uh, best time to train where you can get less interruptions and like you know just focus fully on the training but it's tough when you're trying to balance everything i think james said that you've got like a shit ton of clients christian as well which that also <laughs> makes things very difficult <laughs> yeah it does it does like i, I always have my, my check-ins done before I, I train anyway but you know when replies are coming in and stuff like that it's like i really want to get to that because i want my service to always be on point and stuff and you sometimes have to remember that like that person probably doesn't care when the reply is, as long as they get one. But I don't know. I've, I feel like because I've built my business like that, I don't want to start slipping on that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, like James says, there's a lot of people. But I've also, I mean, I think on average for the last three years now, it's been between 120 and 140 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. But at the same time, when you've done that for three years, you, I can do it with my fucking eyes shut. You know I mean, it, it, I find it pretty easy, to be honest, handling that amount. Some days are bad because it's like, right, everyone wants to mess with me today um, and stuff. But then some days, you know, like today, it's been fucking, man, it's been like bliss today. It was fucking really nice. But, you know, that's the same in any job. You've got good days. You've got fucking shit days, isn't it? Yeah, I think with the replies, you've got to be reasonable because, like, there is this thing within the industry of, like, oh, fast replies, you know, I'm, I'm replying to my clients within minutes sort of thing. But, like, nothing's ever that urgent unless you've got someone that's prepping and it's, like, that weekend they're doing a show or they're on a peak week or whatever. Yeah, 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 that's urgent. You need to get back to that quick. But, like, you know, just general questions, like, it's someone in their off-season sort of thing, like, nothing's that urgent. It's not life or death, is it? So, like, you, you need to remind yourself of that, but at the same time, you need to be balanced to be like, right, I'm not leaving three days to reply to someone. That's just that's just shit service. <laughs> Correct. I don't know about you guys, but I, I set times throughout the days as well where I'm like, right, let's just clear through some replies. It's like, let's just like, factor it into the day a few times because you, you, you kind of you need that time sometimes. And then, as you say, oh. you do the shit check-ins and then you get a fucking shit ton of replies that night to all your check-ins as well. <laughs> I, I have done that before where I'm like, right, allocated time slots. But 
the longer I leave a message, the more I don't want to reply to it. So I'm just like, right, just do it there and then. Yeah. Because yes. I, I don't, I'm just, I don't know why I'm like that, but I'm, I'm also a person, I, I can't go to bed with notifications on my phone. So everything has to be, has to be done. Emails, Insta, WhatsApp, like everything that has to, I can't have just, on anything on my home screen. I hate it. Just attentive though, isn't it? It's just like you want, you, like you care about your clients. You want, you want to give them the best service. So there's nothing wrong with that, but you've, I suppose you've just got to protect yourself to some degree, eh? not let it drive you mental. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm inquiring about something not bodybuilding wise, or right, I've seen this car for sale, let's say, and I email them. If it takes a day to respond, I already think, well, this is not good. Because yeah. essentially what I'm saying is, hey, mate, you've got a car. I want to give you the money for it. And that's the same with someone inquiring me. Like they're essentially saying, hey, mate, can I pay you to help me? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't I want to respond to that straight away? Yeah. Because that's a, that's a business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mate, first impressions count massively. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've I found that just dealing with different companies and that as well, like just like trying to get kit, you're like that that first email back or whatever, it does make a huge difference the way they kind of almost present themselves in it. Yeah, it's like man, like do you not realize I'm trying to give you my money, like, and that's how your business model works. Like, you have to have money. Like, <laughs> I don't. Sometimes it's like getting fucking blood from a stone. I'm like, man, I just first I just want to reply for a start, <laughs> and you know. Ugh. If, if someone's inquiring me, they know everything about what I do within the first fucking 10 seconds of me replying because I've told them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you should be excited if someone's inquiring like, yeah, man, I can sell you this piece of kit. Where, 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 you, where you've located? Or, do you know what I mean? Like, even if you're not excited, fucking act it. Sorry, I only got you. Let's go. Do you set like, expectations um, or... Like with your clients, where they say, don't message me between this time or that time and have like cut off. Yeah, I've got working hours in my WhatsApp bio, but when was the last time you looked at someone's WhatsApp bio, really? <laughs> you know what I mean, like, it's it's one of them. I, I get having boundaries and I try to have them. And most people do respect them after you tell them once, like, look, mate, it's fucking Saturday night at 10 o'clock why are you talking to me like do you know what i mean like not in a dick way but it's like come on mate like i don't come to your work at 10 p.m on a, on a saturday night and ask you shit right you can wait yeah i'll always answer it when they ask you know there's no point in not answering it do you know what i mean but the whole work boundary stuff i get it and stuff like that um and yes you should have boundaries stuff like that but you also work for yourself and you have your own business and if you haven't got clients you haven't got a business so sometimes it's just a fucking phone going off. Suck it up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think especially for anyone that's like listening to this, who's like just starting out. When I started out, I had zero boundaries because I'm not in a position to have boundaries. I'll take on anyone at any time of the day, any day of the fucking week. I don't care because I know when I left my job, I've got to make this work. So I'm going to work fucking seven days a week. If there was an eighth day, I'd be working it. You know what I mean, whereas now I don't have to do that. I still kind of choose to because I enjoy it, but I can actually put more things in place. Like, look, guys, I'm away these next couple of days. Try and keep contact to a, a minimum because I want to chill out. Do you know what I mean? But if I'm doing, I'm doing that twice a year. Do you know what I mean? Fuck me. And if someone's got a problem with that, that's their problem. It, it ain't mine. Yeah, I think that's great advice though, because there's so many like business mentors and that out there. They're like automate this and automate your replies and traffic light systems for clients and that. And it's like, well. You know, if you don't want to do the job, don't fucking do the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I messaged someone earlier because, like, they're a UK coach, yeah, who I've spoken to. In the, we know each other. And all of a sudden, I'm getting loads of comments on my pictures and stuff and, like, liking all my stories. And I'm like, like, that's not normal. And I messaged him saying, bro, sack your VA. Why do you even have a VA? Like, if you've got, in my opinion, I'm sorry, if this hurts any online coaching industry, if you have a VA, you're fucking lazy. You are. And you also don't care because I want people to know when you message me, you're going to talk to me. People can probably see right through it anyway. Like some you woman in Thailand that. sitting there and replying. Am I going to me am I going to message someone randomly go, hey, bro, what's your goals for 2024? I couldn't give a fuck, to be honest, mate. If you want my help, you're going to come to me. You just know you it. Know it when it's a VA, you just know it because they like the top three pictures, your pinned ones, 
and then it's a copy and pasted message and yeah it's, well, we get them all the time don't we as coaches you get all those guys like do you need help with your copy or whatever and fucking video mate, editing. these copywriters i don't know what a copywriter is so i don't know how they're trying to sell it to me i don't know what that what that does that even entail what is your job i don't know well did, <laughs> they, did they just write your caption I don't even know, bro. I don't I think know. That's a kind of job, isn't it? Writing something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking weird one, isn't it? But like, what do you do when you get them? Well, you either ignore them or delete them. So, like, the same thing's going to happen if you've got some fucking just, VA sitting in the Philippines writing messages to people at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, I I delete them instantly because <laughs> there's no point in even conversing. What is the point? Um, I had one earlier actually. You know when someone like spam likes your stories and because my story i always have a lot of stories i'm getting fucking 30 notifications in one go and as it started coming in i immediately went on the profile and blocked it I, i've got no time for that i don't want you to like on stories because that just annoys me and I, when i look on it it's like we can help you grow your business i don't want any help growing it mate it's fine do you know what i mean i probably know more than you you dip <laughs> sorry I am not, I promise I'm not cocky, but it's probably true. No, it's, it's <laughs> you're right, you're right. It is a pain in the ass because we look, it's about three or four a day, like we get, you must get even more. All the time. All the time. I mean, it must it work is, eventually, though. Right? It well, it's one of those, it's the age I'm saying, isn't it? the more shit you throw at the wall, something might stick. <laughs> that was a, literally just got one then. Literally just got one then. <laughs> I wonder how many I've got in my uh, my wee inbox. I actually removed them the other day, but um, we've already got four. There you go, brilliant. What have we got? This guy. Oh, there's a copy guy. Haven't heard it before. I'm going to listen to the newest. Episode. He's going to listen to the podcast apparently. Oh, um, man. Yeah, but he's obviously wanting to. Um, oh, how to get clients? He's got on his page. It's funny when you go on it. It's like we will help you get followers, and then it's like fifty five followers. <laughs> Know your audience, bro. Come on. <laughs> you should probably work on your own page first. <laughs> so, uh, Christian, you were saying the other day you're uh, you're getting a new car. No, no, let's not talk about this, please. Go on, no. <laughs> no, 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 because I haven't picked the car up and I don't want to tempt fate. Right. Because so, at, the moment, at the moment, what have, you, uh, what have you got? I've already had a nightmare, bro, this week, just signing documents. That I'm about to go and redo again. Shit. So that's already a nightmare. Um, at the moment, um, business car is a electric Porsche Taycan, which is sick. I love that thing. Good for the business. Uh, with it electric. Yeah, bro. Good for the business with it being electric. Yeah, that. If anyone's looking for like, because always, oh, do you like electric cars? Not particularly. If it wasn't for having a limited company. I wouldn't have bought an electric car. Yeah, I'm literally just doing it to save the the tax. That's it, um, and it, and it is nice. It, I'm not trying to be ungrateful and stuff like that. It's great, um, but I already know like what I'd have instead if I, <laughs> I hadn't have bought that, and it definitely weren't electric. Um, and then we can come like fun car. We've got a McLaren 720s, which is sick. But it goes it goes in eight days, so I'm trying to not write it off in the next eight days. I'm got fear. I mean, I even let George you fucking drive it the day, and I was thinking, "Sorry, like, story." <laughs> fuck me, I was clinging on for dear life because she she doesn't drive slow. Put it that way. <laughs> it's hard to drive slow in that car. To be fair, impossible. It is impossible. So, so are you traveling up from like Birmingham to like what Manchester area in a fucking McLaren? Or are you taking it the electric? No, car? no, I take I take the portion of it. I, I, we we did go on a big road trip in it the other day actually because I just thought it's probably gonna be one of the last times to I take it out. So. But it's it's relatively comfortable and, and stuff, and it's just shite on fuel. No matter what you do, it's just shit. Yeah, but it's... One, one of my clients, um, her husband bought a Lamborghini Aventador. He was driving from where we live to Glasgow every day to the office, and it. He spent like four hundred quid a week on fuel. It's crazy. A hero. <laughs> I don't know how long he'd done it for, but like you know, we may still be doing it. Who knows? But like, <laughs> might as well Insane. enjoy it when you it. Yeah, mate, as long as you can handle fucking losing a shitload of money on it by putting loads of miles on, you're fucking laughing. I don't think they were too worried about the money, to be fair, so might as well, eh? Yeah, if, you, if you're buying a Lambo, you've you not really got many money issues, I don't think. No. <laughs> yeah, I would be sick at that. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm sick spending 80 quid a month on fuel. <laughs> yeah. 
It was my first time putting in fuel the other day into um <laughs> yeah, so. you better grin to this conversation. So, I can't believe that. I can't believe how you've got through life, mate, to be honest. Well, I, well, I was busy getting about on a Mercedes, that being a bus, but it's uh... <laughs> 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 but yeah, imagine that. Imagine, imagine. What, uh, what car I've got, I always said a Mercedes and I got away with that. But um yeah, so I always manage like that and I always I never really needed it until I needed it and that's why I did I passed it to te- passed it first time though so my guy good work bro I don't think that's really a flex when you're 29 bro yeah no it's <laughs> it's not it's not I, I was I was thinking should I post it I was like I don't know how to post that's it test first time no minors <laughs> it's set well two <laughs> two for speeding but it's uh <laughs> But you it'd be one of those things now you'll be like, I don't know how I ever actually lived without driving. Like Yeah. I've not even as well. I passed a week after I turned 17 because I was driving about when I was 16 because I was a little twat. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was 17 I'll... as well, to be fair, when I passed. So not first time though. It took me second time. There you go. There I was a go. teenager though, to be fair. Yeah, I used to go out in my brother's really? car and you have his license on me just in case. But, you know, I don't think my parents knew that. So, so you've been like a car enthusiast all your life, then, Christian? Yeah. Since since I was like fucking three years old, mate, with cars on the fucking carpet. So you're living the yeah. dream. You've got a McLaren. Yeah, man. It's um, it's weird. I find it very odd. Um, like the car, the car I've bought that I pick up next week is like been like lifelong. Un- like I used to term it as like this is a really unrealistic goal. Like, I always have, like, realistic cars in my head. Like, yeah, I could definitely get to that at some point. And then, like, un- like a list of unrealistic cars. And it was just a bit... It was weird, man, just even being in there. I was just like, what the fuck is even going on? Because it's just... I just find it weird, mate. Like, yeah, I just find it weird. And just, yeah, it's odd. Uh, I can imagine I'd be the same. Like, it would just it'd be it'd be an odd feeling. It's like, even even opening the gym, I got that. People are like, what's it like to have your own gym? I was like, it's weird. Yeah. It's like it's imposter syndrome, isn't it? Like I walked in and thinking they are not going to take me seriously because I dress like a fucking idiot for a start, <laughs> and they're thinking fuck. And I said, right, I'm here to see this. If it's what it says it is, I'm having it. And they're like, yeah, sound, yeah, um, yeah. It was fucking surreal, man. But I'm so, I'm so nervous about picking it up. I just feel sick every day <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> I think. Maybe- Mainly because of the money, I think, to be fair, because it's like I've never spent that amount on anything. So, but if it's what you're passionate about, like if you've been in the car yeah. since you're free, it's like, fuck it. If you can do it, why not? Yeah. And that, that's the whole thing. It's like, right, in two years' time, I might be fucking dead. I might have no business, whatever. And I, I don't want to think back. I could have done that then and I didn't do it. Yeah. Because what is the fucking point in that, man? Like, I can't take it with me for a start. I'm a bit of a, numbers guy anyway in terms of like i over calculate everything i'm like right can i afford to do this three times over if the answer is yes i'll do it yeah. do you know what i mean so I, I don't like being in a situation where i think fuck like that's just not fun for me yeah. and since since actually buying that like the other week i mean i've only given the deposit but so i know that something's coming out of my bank in a couple of weeks <laughs> I've pushed way harder with, with work and funny enough in the last two days I've had eight people sign up and I'm like, well, what what was I worried about when I bought it? Yeah. No, if I just put a bit more in and I put a bit more out there and stuff like that, you get the return. Yeah. I was the same when I actually just got that BMW I thought, fuck yeah, it's an extra bit of money coming out of my account each month. It's only like like the insurance and the car, it comes to like five hundred a month. It's only that, but it's still another by outgoing in it, so I thought, fucking hell, yeah, can, of course. I, can you afford well, it? I remember back, like, before I'd even left school, I'd have, like, two jobs and be in school. As soon as I left school, I'd do two, three jobs at a time sometimes because I'm like, right, I really want this. It's going to cost me X. How can I make that money back? And I used to do all sorts of shit, man. Like, and it, I, I'm actually, I tell you what, I'm proud of. I've done everything legit. I've never done anything that's like, not legal and shit like that to get money i've always just thought things like i've done clothing lines before granted you know small and stuff like that but it was a bit extra i'll go and if someone says i need someone to come out with this i'll pay it i'm there I, what what do you need you know money's money man and if you want it it is out there to get 
but a lot of people say they want it, but don't actually want to do any work to, to get it. Just hope it just lands at their feet. People are wondering, like, yeah. how has he got 150 clients? There's a, probably a reason why we've got 150 clients. It's not just happened. Yeah, yeah. And I think because, obviously, I only left my job, like, three and a half years ago. I don't think people knew that I was, like, I was doing this before, and I was trying. It's not something that's just happened overnight. It's just been, like, I work every day. And if you work every day, you're probably going to get rewarded in some respect, if you're good at it, obviously, like, instead of being, like, a, a busy fool. But you just got to, like, I'll do a lot of business consults with people and they say, I want to do this, I want to do this, work. right, here's everything you need to do right now to get all of those things and do the right things and all that sort of stuff. And you don't seem to do it. I'm just like, you're all mouth. Like, that's it. And, man, I will do the dog shit jobs. I don't care what it is. Man, I remember being, like, 4 a.m. when I'm, like, 24, 25, taking out the bins after an, after like everyone's left the club and stuff and cleaning fucking toilets and shit like that. I didn't care because I was like, right, well, I'm getting paid. So I, I, you know, I'm just going to do it. Do you know what I mean? People are, people are scared to fucking work hard. It's kind of go back to what we were saying earlier. Like everyone's looking for the automation or the VA to do it for them. It's like, you know, how many VAs have you had in the, the few years you've been coaching or not few years, but the you know time you've been coaching zero and you've got to where you are. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never had any help. Now, that might that might be holding me back in some respect potentially. Like I know that I've probably needed a PA for fucking last year and a half minimum, and I still ain't got one because I'm like I know I can do it all myself, and I'm willing to put that. But yeah, but imagine the the time you could say yeah I know, but I've got to fucking pay this person, and I don't like paying people stuff because it's my money. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And when I know that I can do it myself and probably better than they can. Until I find something that I'm shit at doing within the business, I'll get someone else to do it. I haven't found it yet. What um, what do you think to like content creation, Instagram, and all that sort of stuff? Do you have a plan with that, bro? I have no marketing strategy. I don't know what a marketing strategy is, bro. I post what I want to post. If I think it's funny or whatever, or I think it's helpful, someone else is probably going to think it's funny or helpful as well. You know, and I think. Like again, especially when I do business consults, I kind of have to put myself back in their shoes, like at the start. And at the start, bro, I remember when I was like, right, I'm going to make this a full time thing. And it was during lockdown. I put out a YouTube video every single day for about a month. Okay. I didn't want to fucking do that because I hate it, but I did it, learned how to edit, all this sort of shit. It wasn't any good, but people were watching because they were fucking bored in lockdown. So sweet. And people came invested in it and stuff. Like, with the coaches that I have underneath me, you'll notice they're both posting reels all the time, educational, informative, all sorts of stuff. I'm letting them do that because that's what's going to drive their business, okay, and get them more clients and then it gets me more clients. Now, I can kind of post whatever I really want, but it's because it's got to that level. I did all the shit at the start and now I can just do a voiceover and take the piss out of everyone. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. they've, got, they've got a good response to them, haven't they? <laughs> Bro, I have never, like, my reels, like, I don't get, like, loads of views and stuff like that, but the first voiceover did has just gone, like, 50,000 views. I'm like, right, I've never done that ever. And it was just by me being me. That was it. Like, just talking like I, I normally talk, like I'm a bit of an idiot. And it worked. So I'm just going to keep doing that for a bit. Going back to that thing that we said, uh, people buying into you as a person. People buy people, man. Like a hundred percent. I think I massively learned that in in sales, really. How much easier is it though when you are just being yourself? Like when you see all these people like trying to like copy what other people do, like that must be an absolute effort to try and be, like act as something you're not. But like it is, it's just so freeing when you're like just putting up what you want to put up and you know doing it that way. Yeah, and I, I do recommend people do that because, like. Okay, they start coaching with it, and then they go, oh, this guy's not like what he's like at all. Like, yeah, oh, I don't yeah. Actually, I don't actually really like him. You know, I think a, a great person to actually look at in that respect, Cuba. Cuba is unapologetically himself. He shouts at the fucking screen, this is the fucking right way, do it this fucking way, cool, done. And people like it. I, I don't like it. Like, I, I couldn't be coached by Cuba, because me and him would probably end up having a fucking fight. Do you know what I mean? Because that's not how I like to be coached. But at the same time, he probably couldn't think of anything worse than working with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're not compatible at all. 
you know, doesn't think I, I don't. That doesn't mean I don't respect the guy or like his content and stuff like that. I like what he puts out because he just puts out whatever the fuck he wants to put out. That's it. And he loves training and stuff like that. And I don't really love talking about training because I'm very just keep it fucking simple. Get in the gym and fucking do what it says here. Sweet. Do you know what I mean? Like it's gonna work. But you know, everyone has their own kind of like niche. Absolutely. James hates talking about training too. Fuck me, he was on about some fucking muscle in my foot the other day. Oh yeah, one minute, yeah. It's the let me uh there you go. Look, it's uh yeah, get it out. Fucking, <laughs> out. Thanks, bro. Again, uh, yeah, it's just it's like you know, it's nice that when you've got that thing of like this is the way I want to do things, this is the way I do things. And there's no other, there's no other alternative. You're not just. I think for, personally, something I've done for ages was I sat on the fence too much with absolutely everything, and it gets you nowhere. Where everyone does that. Yeah, everyone does that. Everyone they always say the same things on business consult. Oh, yeah, but I'm scared what people are going to say about that, or I'm scared to put it out there because of what people are going to say. Who cares, man? Fuck people. Not everyone is going to like my content, but some people will, and that's cool. I can't coach everyone, but I can definitely coach a select few that do like me. Yeah. yeah, it's a niche, isn't it? You can't target everyone. It's fucking ridiculous. Can't. And that's what people, that's why a lot of people's content is shit because they're trying to target everyone. Stop bothering with that. Just be yourself, man. Like, that is the best thing. Like I said at the start, we all do the same fucking job. The only thing that differentiates us is the person. That's it. But when I watched back our, well, our last podcast, I mean, James done, we never really had like a subject for it. We just started chatting shit. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's that like, good. You know, there's not that much value in there. And I listened to it back and started making some reels from it. I was like, this is fucking brilliant. There's just so much personality in this. We're just, we're chatting shit. Yeah. But we're, we're chatting our shit, if you know what I mean. And it's probably some of the, the better reels we've got out of podcasts and that. So it is like, yeah. It's, 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 I, it's I used that. to do a podcast every single week with Joe Jeffrey every week called Carbs Cast. We haven't done it for years, unfortunately. And people always used to say the same thing because we were just like, this is literally shit. Like, it's mindless bollocks. But people loved it because it was just people just chatting shit and having a laugh. I mean, that's like, definitely our podcast all over, isn't it? Just yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want to, I don't sometimes want to talk about specific topic and a strength profile of this and Man, I don't find that interesting. Some people will, that's fine, but that that's not my audience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there, there's that line as well where coaches as well. It's like you're not out there to be an educator either. You're out there to be a coach. And it can go too far that way as well. And just talking about stuff that, that folk aren't interested in. Me and James were just talking before this about something we we're gonna put out there, and it's like, are people interested in the stuff we're gonna talk about here? You know, we need to just give deliver what they want and and yeah. give give them a little bit of what they need but you know what they want mostly mm-hmm. without fucking bo- boring them too much along the way that is the boring thing you know it's get like we said just going back to that personality getting that personality into it and that's what's going to get the buy-in some of the youtube yeah, stuff i've been doing recently it's just like i just get the the camera guy to come in and i just train and i just say what's on my mind as i'm training to just talk about it as yeah. i go along and uh a lot of people as well they're like yeah you you should probably swear less and i'm like no that's that's you know that's part of that's part of me you know that's how i speak yeah. if, I, if i'm speaking to you unless you don't swear, yeah, sometimes I, I kind of switch it off then but that's yeah, part you, of the fucking scottish mate to be honest <laughs> i just use i just use the word fucking as a comma yeah <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I think some people like uh, some people get a shock because I I know when I speak to people if they don't swear I won't I won't really swear I'll kind of read the room a little bit but like the minute you're talking to a mate or someone who's swearing as well it's like it just comes out like and then some of them watch the videos are like holy shit I didn't realize you swear as much. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, they'll get it's over it. Pre workout, I don't blame that. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to say, do you want to wrap this up now? Yeah, cool. All, all good. So in summary. Talk about people. people and so be a uh, put a bit more personality into your coaching. Yeah, man. Like, what have you got to lose? Really? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it. If you've got a shit personality, <laughs> don't do it. But the, this is the thing that like, you can't teach a personality. Yeah. And you know, if, if you're a cunt, you'll attract cunts. Yeah. Oh, mate, I've said this, I've, I've said this a hundred times. Like, at the end of the day, like, if you haven't got a personality, you, it, it's more difficult. But I, co- I used to coach a guy who was a coach and he's incredibly boring, okay? But he had about 80 clients. And you know what all they were as well? Just boring, normal guys. 
you know what I mean? So it, it works, but you got to be willing to also work with that. Like I work with some absolute nutters, but I love that because so am I. <coughs> That's fuck, interesting. Isn't it? They know who they are as well. <laughs> you nutter as well listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way good way to wrap it up. And I think the name of this podcast will be Christian Hates Old People because there's something he said earlier. So please don't. <laughs> Been clipped up. <laughs> we need some sort of clickbait. Why does this guy hate old people? That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> get, 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 get him sucked in. It's fine. <laughs> Goes onto your profile. It's like uh, Christian, I coach men between 25 and 35. No older. No older. <laughs> no old cunts. <laughs> Not too young cunts either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right cool we wrap that up at that then guys yeah, drop it over there thanks, yeah. thanks for coming on Christian nah, thanks yeah. I really appreciate it it's a pleasure